All right, guys, let's quickly go back over our integer strategies. So we have some example problems here. We have three basic problems on the top, and then we have some more, um, more like Gemma problems on the bottom. So let's talk about how we're gonna use our integer strategies on these problems, and just again, refresh our memories. All right, so first things first, we see a subtracting and some negatives. I can see clearly here, this is subtracting with some negatives, so I need to refresh my memory. So I'm going to start at the back of the number and I'm gonna circle all the way to the back of the six, start at the back of the six, circle to the front. I'm gonna rewrite what's inside that circle. So in the first circle, I have negative six. In my second circle, I have minus and a negative, and we know those make a giant plus sign. So that's positive four. Then I'm gonna throw those on my add and subtract integer table because we know this is an adding and subtracting problem and that is the strategy we use for that. Six is negative, four is positive, which means that six is going to win, negative is gonna win. And then I know different signs subtract, so six minus four is two. So this final answer will be negative two. And again, same signs we add. These were different signs, so this is different signs subtract. These are teams competing against each other, so they have to subtract each other. And again, negative one because six is larger. All right, let's try the next one. The next one says nine plus parentheses negative two. So again, I see I'm adding and subtracting. I know immediately I'm going to use my positive negative table, so I know I need to circle my numbers. So I'm gonna start at the back of the two, go all the way to the back of the nine, start at the back of the nine, go up. So I know this is a positive nine. I have a good versus evil, so evil wins. And then I can put them in my table. So nine was positive, two was negative. So this time my positive is gonna win because nine is larger than two. And they are again, different signs subtract. So I'm gonna say nine minus two, is seven, so this final answer is positive seven. All right, my next problem says five parentheses, negative three. Well, anytime a number sits right next to a parentheses, that means to multiply. So this is really five times negative three, and we know when we're multiplying, we're going to use our integer man strategy. So integer man is only used when multiplying or dividing. So I have a positive five and a negative three, which means my answer is going to be a negative 15, because five times three is 15. All right, so those are your basic examples. Remember, you have to evaluate what operation is happening. If it's add and subtract, you make a table. If it is multiply and divide, you're gonna use integer man. All right, down here at the bottom, we have some Gemma problems. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make my Gemma tower. I know that they're Gemma problems because they have mixed operations. So you can see here, this is subtracting, this is dividing, this is multiplying. When I have multiple operations, I know I need my Gemma tower. So first thing I need to evaluate is, do I actually have any groupings? Do I have any parentheses? Is this really parentheses? No, because there's not anything inside of that parentheses to solve. That's just negative 110. So because there's not anything to solve, this is not a grouping, it's not a G. There are no exponents, but we did say there was some multiplying and some add subtract, right? So we have multiply divide and we know we move left to right and we have some add subtract again left to right. So I'm gonna move across my problem and I'm gonna say, okay, is this multiplying and dividing? No. Is this multiplying and dividing? Yes. So that's gonna be my first step. I'm gonna box that division. Again, we evaluated this parentheses and it's just there to show you that that's a negative number. So I'm gonna say negative 110 divided by five. I know I need my integer man, right? I know I'm gonna need him on this step for Gemma. So 110 divided by five is going to be 22. The 110 is negative, the five was positive, so this is negative 22. I can mark that off and rewrite the rest of my problem. So I had 35 minus negative 22 times two. All right, and I'm all done with the that division step, but I'm still moving left to right looking for my multiplicative. This is subtracting, this is multiplying. Oops, this is multiplying. So. I'm going to box my multiplication. I have negative 22 times two. I'm gonna need integer man again. 
because I'm multiplying with a negative. So I have a negative 22 and a positive 2. That's going to make negative 44. And again, I'm done with that. So I mark it off and I bring down 35 and the minus sign. Now I'm done with my multiplicative step and I'm on to my additive step. And you can see, remember, additive means add or subtract. And so in this case, I have my um, circling my numbers, just like we did up top. And I'm going to rewrite. So I had a positive 35 and we had two negatives. So those are going to get together and make a giant plus sign, my two negatives here. So this is actually positive 44. I'm going to use my integer table just to verify. I had 35 positive and 44 positive. So everything is on the positive. So that is same signs you add. So I'm going to put all my positive team members together. And I end up with positive 79. All right. So just because it's a Gemma problem doesn't mean we're not going to use our integer strategies. All right. Last example is here on the right. We have negative 30 plus 2 times negative 7. So I have some plus, but I also have some times. Remember, because when you sits right here next to the parentheses, that's multiply. So I'm going to make my Gemma Tower. I'm going to circle the steps that I have. I can clearly see I don't have any multiplicate, I mean, any parentheses because my parentheses don't have anything to solve inside of them. But I do know that this parentheses represents multiplication, right? Multiplication, whatever symbol you like to use. And so I know I'm going to have some multiplicative and some additive, but no groupings or exponents. All right, so I'm going to start with my multiplicative and I'm going to say two times negative seven. So two times negative seven is gonna need integer man. I have a positive two and a negative seven, and therefore that's a negative 14. I bring down the rest of my problem. I have a plus sign and a negative 30. I'm all done with my multiplicative step, and now I can, I can circle these numbers, right? Notice I circled from the back of the 14 all the way to the back of the 30. So in my first number, I have negative 30. In my second number, I have good versus evil, and we know evil wins. I'm going to throw those on a positive negative table, and I say 14 is negative, 30 is negative. Same signs you add. So I'm going to add my two negative team teammates together, and I end up with negative 44. All right, and that's your refresher on your integer rules, both standalone at the top and your Gemma at the bottom. All right, don't forget to use your integer rules. Go practice.